And what is up, guys? I am back today for another episode of Need for Speed Pro Street. And uh, last episode, we went and did obviously the beginning race. And we went through the Battle Machine Challenge in Nevada and picked up the Cobalt drag car and kept, obviously, because we have to, the, <coughs> the 240SX. Hey, the car's looking tight. Hope you can keep it off the wall. There's no safety net here, homie. You bring your own cars and pay your own damage. Race days are a mix of different race types. Unlike challenges, you get to choose which cars you bring. Choose carefully, though, because you can only bring one car per race type, and it's got to last the whole weekend. You can bring a backup car, too, but uh, don't rely on it. Hey, remember to take care of your cars between events. From now on, all repairs are coming out of your own pocket. You can pay to fix minor bumps and scratches between races. Winning, dominating, and breaking race day records will earn you big rewards. The more you race, the bigger the payoff. Remember, you are here to dominate. Retiring is an option if you're in too deep, but if you quit before you won the race day, you lose the points you've earned. So hang tight, little buddy. Race hard and take care of your cars. All right? Come on. Heck yeah, man. You got it. All right, now I actually got to check something because I didn't notice in the last episode what was going on here. Okay, so I did break those two records, and I broke one record for G Effect. So I'm already on the way to becoming Drag King and Grip King. So that's pretty cool. So now back to uh, Chicago Airfield. We're going to go with the 240SX and the Cobalt, obviously. Only two cars we got at the moment. And uh, honestly, I do believe that we will be able to absolutely demolish these guys. Well, Just because well, it is so freaking easy. And well, you know what? You can tell he means yeah. Sorry about my mic acting up occasionally. It's uh I'm using just my standard Xbox headset. Which, oddly enough, is a pretty good alternative to a proper mic. Well, I say mic, a proper uh microphone. I mean, I don't, wait, I don't see the point of getting, like, a ridiculously expensive, like, even if it's lower end, like, a, a microphone when, for say, you're a gamer, and you have two set, like, two sets of headphones, just use one, plug it into your computer, and use that as your microphone. And then just, you know, use the other one, keep it on your head, to uh, use for chat. I mean, it makes sense. Or at least it does to me, because that's what I've done in the past. Uh, for the Forza Autocross on Horizon 3 that I did a while back, that, I used that method. For Xbox itself, I used my lower quality mic uh, to talk to everyone, and then for the recording software, I used the headset I'm using right now, which is a bit higher quality. It's a, a set of Turtle Beaches, which, honestly, it's not the best set of Turtle Beaches, but it's still better than using a three-year-old Beats uh, microphone wire that has freaking electrical tape around it and doesn't work all the time. It's also better than using the computer's standard microphone because that has so much echo because it needs to be able to pick up stuff from a distance. That and then you can't have any kind of audio playing through the computer if you wanted to because the microphone would just pick it up instantly. Any kind of tapping on the keyboard or clicking it picks it up so loud, like louder than it actually should be. 
Especially if it's like uh, using the keyboard at all. Holy freaking crap. That is annoying. It's like the video at this point is, is uh, long gone, it's been deleted. But uh, the first video that I ever did with my capture card was on Need for Speed Carbon. The issue with that was I didn't have a proper, like, I didn't have everything set up right yet. And it ended up recording through the microphone that was built into the computer, which at the time, also, I didn't have my own computer, so I was using my grandparents' computer, which is actually not a half bad one. But still, the point remains that it was super echoey. And I have the gaming spec, uh, or version, of the computer that I used for that video. So, my big issue with it is, like, if I were to unplug my headset, it wouldn't, like, properly record audio. It'd just be immensely echoey. And I know that this is completely unrelated to the gameplay, which I just beat a track record. Uh, that, like, I'm just... Eh, uh, it... There's no way to put it without gloating. <laughs> God damn it. Just like, trying my best not to gloat. So, because I have played this game so much, I generally do really well in the first, I don't know, two areas. This one and the next one. Uh, React Team Sessions is the one after this. Are the ones that I generally do really good in. I never understood why I did so good in them. Like, even when I first started playing the game, I was just good at them, and then after I did the React Team Sessions stuff, including the showdown that goes with React Team Sessions, once you get into uh, the super promotion, a proper super promotion, it gets so hard all of a sudden, and I have no freaking clue why. And my issue with it is just, it's like, oh, this game is really nice and easy and fun, and my first time through I get up to super promotion and it made me rage so hard and it was and that was back when I only had a Wii I didn't have the Xbox yet so what happened was I had the Wiimote on my wrist because that's what you're supposed to do and uh, it did what it was supposed to do because I started because I chucked the remote and it kind of whipped around and hit my arm Thankfully, it didn't go towards the TV. That would have been horrible. Obviously, I mean, if you've ever seen anyone play on the Wii really intensely and not have the strap on, there's going to be a there's going to be a Wii mote in the TV. And I don't think anyone's going to be too happy about that happening. Just saying. There went one of the Group B guys, took you long enough. And I passed him right back. It's the beauty of me knowing these, like, these first few tracks so well. It is so easy to win on them and beat the Group B guys, which are supposed to be... Like, they're supposed to pass you super easily and beat you and yet generally if I have a good enough car I I end up beating the group B guys in it in a bottom end group A car just cuz I pull so far ahead of them all ah there was one group B guy that got past me Felix Tang got past me and ran nine seconds faster total But otherwise, I beat everyone else.
which is awesome. Like honestly, if like when you think about it, that's kind of like saying, "Oh, I did the hundred meter sprint." Or something like that. I don't know metric. Like, I don't know what general sprints are, but like, for a field and track sprint, would uh, like it's kind of like going and say, like you are the, for say like the least athletic there, and you're not that fat. Like like you're in the bottom of what is there. You wouldn't. Ge like, generally, you would not be expected to pull off a huge victory over the other people there, and then you just go and freaking charge out ahead of them. And even if you're running out of steam at the end, you're so far away from everyone else that you're still going to pull out the win by a huge margin. It's kind of like that. But it's like, take this little 240, for example, and then there's this Chevelle up ahead. That Chevelle should be a lot faster around a lot of courses. Well, unless he does that. I Never mind. Take this uh, Mustang, for example. <laughs> should be a lot faster, but just look at that. Went straight past him. And that, in, well, at least in this case, it's a sense of good driver slow car and a bad driver fast car, which I've actually done that on Forza. A lot of fun to do that. If you're in a, like, for say, it's, you put someone, wait, let's say we're on Forza 7. Someone's in a GT350R Mustang. And you're in the uh, 2011 GT500 and you still bust out the win on him even though the other guy's in the more track oriented Mustang and you're in the one that has wonky gearing that you need to rev out like it crazy in order to stay in the power band because both because all the cars on the track are completely bone stock no tuning whatsoever and you still beat the crap out of them it's kind of like that just in this case, no matter what, your car's going to be tunable to a point. Well, unless it's a pre-tuned, of course, because, you know, pre-tuned cars in this game, you can't screw with them at all. You're kind of stuck with that tune. Let's see here. Oh, holy crap, I beat the living crap out of that record. 9,200. And 58. Of course, can't forget the little 58 there. Broke another track record. I see another one of Joe Tackett Civics. This annoys me. Right, now the big thing is, should I do the final time attack? and then come back and do the drag race, or should I do the drag race and then come back and do the final time attack? Drag race. It's just quicker. It's easier. It's, you know, I'm good at drag racing and I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Like, this is what Need for Speed Payback's drag racing should be. But it's not. In a way, when you think about it, this is kind of like, uh, the, well, but the cruise drag racing stuff is kind of like this, even though their cars are capable of 300 something miles an hour. Because they're like Bonneville top speed cars and crap like that. It's like, uh, let's, let's see here. On the crew, I have a 2012 392 Challenger. And that thing, when converted to a drag spec, which is part of the Wild Run expansion for the crew, um, the way I have it set up right now, at least, which is very much improvable, 
it makes 2,900-ish horsepower and over 4,000 foot-pounds of torque. And does 350 miles an hour if I push it. Like, if you max it out to its top natural speed and then hit the nitrous, it'll do 100 or 350-plus. And it's absolutely insane. I love that thing. Like, I, I cruised it across the cruise map, which is huge. Got off the line better that time. Got a 1263 out of 120. Now we got Felix Tang in second, right behind us. And he's driving a Golf GTI with 65 less horsepower. Now I'm going to be facing up against <laughs> Philip Douglas. Ryan I have no idea how fast he's going to be, but generally in drag races, if you do it without being an absolute idiot, you're going to launch before them and never see them again. Or you're going to have an absolutely terrible launch and then just drive by them. Twelve sixty six. Okay, I drop. Well, I drop. I gained point oh three of a second. Uh, Mr. Tang there is running some pretty consistent fourteens. I say, well, <laughs> I say that he's staying in the fourteens, which most people vary by about a second or so in this game, from what I've seen, depending on like how far in you are. There's really only one guy that everyone's talking about. And I see Mr. That's Bradley Ryan Hunter's Ryan. car. And I've now dominated. I got he 10 grand. Holy crap. You want, if he keeps this up, he'll be a and uh, just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to go and destroy this track record for the time attack in my Nissan 240SX S13. Okay, bottom of the uh, of the power list. Bottom, like I'm, I'm essentially on the bottom of everything, except for uh, win loss ratio. At least in this game. When it comes to like Call of Duty, on the other hand, I'm not good at COD. So, what what shooting games are it? Am I uh, half decent at? None of them. Pretty much. I'm okay at Rainbow Six Siege. But uh, otherwise, not really good at anything. I was okay at the original Star Wars Battlefront. Which was actually good. Unlike, from what I can tell, the second one. Which seems to be, you know, EA going mad with microtransactions. Kind of like with the new Need for Speed Payback. But uh, otherwise, the uh, only thing I'm good at shooting lies is uh, zombies. And real life, I'm not a half bad shot in real life. Needs to be improved though. Best shot was with a, uh, a P9 9mm handgun. And next was, Chris, was a Chris Vector. With a, uh, a red dot. Which, that actually wasn't a half bad gun to go shooting with. It had zero recoil, because, you know, pistol round in a, uh... I mean, it's a submachine gun, generally, it's a pistol round, but... But it wasn't really a machine gun, it was, uh... Semi-automatic only, as per U.S. gun law. Well, U.S. federal gun law. Because, you know, anything new can't be fully automatic. It's illegal for it to be full auto. Which, I can understand. I mean, 
we had a bunch of crap happening. Obviously, that's been, you know, just another reason to enforce all those laws. But still, it's like they shouldn't get. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm anti gun. I should get rid of guns in general. But it's like, you're not going to get us to change the Constitution entirely. That's one of the original amendments. It's the Second Amendment written in there, the right to bear arms. <clears throat> Which is, when you think about it, a very important, a, a, a very important amendment. Due to the fact of, it's like, while it's very, very unlikely, there is still a chance of, you know, an invasion of the US, especially now, and it's like, the entire reason of that was because of, in the Revolutionary War, how did we win? Militia, civilian militia, because, you know, ev everyone was there, the Minutemen dressed as civilians, and they're part of the reason how we won. But still, it's like, it's, it's stupid, what they're doing, it's like, if you want, especially where I live, where there's about a million different regulations that you need to get past before you can do everything. Like, there's a license for literally every type of gun, and there is multiple for handguns, depending on how you're going to carry it and what kind of handgun it is, how big it is, whether it's a mini, what kind of ammo it shoots all that kind of stuff. It's like, just go to somewhere like Maine or Texas and walk into a gun shop as long as they'd run a background check on you. Unless it's to carry concealed. Then you gotta get a, then you gotta pass a test and all that. You gotta go through the training. You know what, if anything, I have to say that this is Track record a broken. Okay, sweet. Alright, if I go and look in here, Ryan Cooper, Cooper. Cooper. yep, dominated. Like Leave the race day. Hi, and uh, quickly repair the car. And uh, that race day actually took a lot longer than I expected. So, thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next one, and if you liked it, Please like and subscribe. And, uh, like always, goodbye.